Welcome everyone. Thanks very much for attending my talk. Uh, I think that most of you already read the description of this talk, but before even introducing myself, I would like to start with some short disclaimer because this short is, talk is very short and I don't have enough time to cover like all the uh, topics about Jenkins and how we can use it with the Cloud Foundry, but I really hope that CICD is not a real problem in the modern world and most of you already solved this, but uh, I want to share some of my knowledge and uh, practices which we are using when we are working with our Cloud Foundry customers and actually nowadays I'm starting every of, uh, every of my project by implementing at least basic CICD process because usually we're all thinking that this is not important at the current moment, but uh, it actually will save a lot of time for you in the future. And yes, this is, Jenkins is not my main sale tool. I work with like many sale tools like Concourse, GitLab CI, Travis CI, but still this is the tool which we are using the mostly. And uh, we all should agree that Jenkins is a leading sales server at the current moment. Uh, my name is Andrei Krasnitsky. I live and work in Minsk, Belarus. I am a software engineer at Altoros, but since we are working mostly with the Cloud Foundry, uh, we like to call it Cloud Foundry engineer. Uh, I have been working with the Cloud Foundry and Jenkins from the beginning of my career, and this is was tools which I began to study at the very beginning of my software journey. Um, I'm also maintainer of the LogSearch project. If some of you are already working with the open source version of the Cloud Foundry or the, with the PCF installations, you should know something about this project. So the main question with people asking uh, why we're still using the Jenkins because here are the too many CI servers which already solve all the problems which was a Jenkins. But I have some simple reason for it. Uh, the first of all, Jenkins is really easy to set up because you just need to download the Jenkins artifact, uh, run it with the single command Java jar in any virtual machine on your favorite cloud provider, and that's all. And if we are talking about the PCF tile, which I'm here representing, you just need to download this tile from the Pivotal network, import to the PCF Ops Manager, click Apply Changes, and that's all. You will have like a fully working Jenkins environment within your Pivotal Cloud Foundry infrastructure. So Jenkins has a very low input threshold because when you start into working, you can go to the web UI and you will see that all buttons, all text fields, all the checkboxes will be provided with description on what should be included there. Uh, Jenkins support all of the environments. You can run your Jenkins master and Jenkins build slaves on any environment you can run the half of the Linux, half of the Windows environment, and Jenkins has a really great documentation. Uh, even Jenkins plugins has a great documentation, so you almost may be sure when you try to solve some problem that this problem was solved by someone over the internet. And finally, Jenkins is easy to customize. You can create your uh, own plugin if you have like basic experience in Java and install this plugin in a couple of commands or in a couple of clicks when using the Jenkins Web UI. So sooner or usually later, we all start into implementing the CI-CD processes on our project. Usually we like to begin with the basic bash scripts and usually the most of people actually stopped, or stopped on this step, but uh, if you will continue to improve your CI-CD process, you may achieve the many benefits from it. And in this speech, I want to focus on some of the features which will be, will, was included in the Jenkins, but still people ignore them. And I will show some tips on how you can save a lot of time even for the entry organization uh, when you're using the features which comes from the Jenkins out of the box. So it's usually all about the pipelines. So when you start the continuous integration journey, you need to understand that this process is more complicated than just uh, our usual build, test, and deploy steps. Each of these elements should consist of many other steps, and these steps usually are interdependent. Uh, this, why this algorithm should look like following. For example, you can run some unit test, then you need to 
build your application, you need to create like services which will be required by your application in the cloud and so on. Also, you should always remember to include some additional logic to, uh, to roll back service if some of your post deployment tests were, are failed. And I would like to focus on the, some tools which will help you to build the powerful pipelines with the Jenkins. So uh, how exactly can Jenkins pipeline help you to improve your CI CD process? The most obvious and the, uh, that your pipeline code will be stored in the, your Git repo or any version control system that you're trying to use. And uh, in case of any disaster, you will easy to recover from the, uh, you will, you can easily recover from this Jenkins file in the pipeline. And since you're storing all pipeline configuration in the version control system, you can easily check what was changed, when these changes were made, and who exactly made these changes. Also, uh, one important feature that Jenkins pipeline provides is that you can, uh, you can implement your own features inside your Jenkins file, and all these features will be available for all of your users on the Jenkins server. For example, if you know that you need some difficult step, but you, need, you know that uh, one person from the, your team already solved this problem, you just need to import this function, and you can use this function in your own uh, pipeline file. So here is a simple pipeline example. And you can see that this is, uh, pipeline file is based on the Groovy-based DSL. Um, uh, some people may be scared because we all uh, know that our modern CI system use the YAML pipeline, YAML syntax, but it's not more complicated than default YAML, which we are working in the most CI tools. And besides, I added here the link. It provides like good tutorial which if you want to start working with the Jenkins pipelines. So, uh, Jenkins includes a uh, good feature which is called the snippet generator. It can help you to begin working with the Jenkins pipelines. I usually use a tool to discover like uh, steps which provided by some plugins. So let me show you how I can use this with our Jenkins files. For example, we want to, just a second. For example, we want to create new Jenkins file, which will be executed on the master node. So I will check the, take the node. This looks, oh, okay. Looks like we have a problem. Just a second. Mm. Yeah, there we go. So we would like to run this uh, pipeline on the master node. So we will have like a simple pipeline snippet which we can use. So let me put it in the, our Jenkins file. Okay. So let's add some additional stage like uh, for example, we want to build and push to our Cloud Foundry. So we can add stage here. And for example, the next our steps will be to execute a Maven clean install to prepare our package to push to the Cloud Foundry. Okay. We will use the shell script.
and after that we can add some additional tasks to push this application to the Cloud Foundry. So here I need to specify the API which we will use, credential which is already stored in the My Jenkins environment, some organization and some space, and generate new pipeline script. So, so that's all. It's uh, how our basic pipeline file can be uh, can be used, and you see that it's really easy to create using the, this pipeline a snippet generator feature. So let's continue with my presentation. Uh, another one. Uh, how many of you are actually working with Jenkins? Oh, almost all. And how many are you using the Blue Ocean UI? Okay, <laughs> not many. Uh, from the version gen, from the version Jenkins 2.0, Jenkins Secure out of the box. This is new UI, which is called Blue Ocean UI, and this UI includes some additional features which can be used to uh, edit your pipeline files. So let me show how you can use the Blue Ocean pipeline editor with your Jenkins files. Oh, let's open. This is how the pipeline actually looks in the pipeline editor. So let's open my another job. I have a job called Blue Ocean Pipeline Editor. Open our branch, and here we can easily add some steps to our pipeline file. As you see, I already have build test uh, tasks, so let's add new task which will push this application to the Cloud Foundry. So we will call this stage push and add new step which will push to Cloud Foundry. And again, some random credential ID and click save. And actually when we click save, Jenkins will automatically uh, commit these changes and push these changes to the our Git repo, which we are using with this pipeline file. So let's check at push stage. Okay, let's wait for some time to save the changes. Now we can change my repo. And as you see, the all changes were committed to my GitHub repo, so you can choose. Would, would you uh, like to change your Jenkins file from the, your favorite uh, editor, or you can just use the Blue Ocean Pipeline editor, add some additional stages in this, and Jenkins will automatically commit all this for you. So let's back to presentation. Mm. Jenkins also offers some other tools which can be uh, useful when you're trying to improve or debug the uh, your pipeline code, Blue Ocean Editor, one of them I already mentioned about that. The another uh, tool called Command Line Pipeline Linter, it allows you to check the and validate the pipeline code before actually applying these changes to uh, Jenkins server, so we can use our we can use our file that we created before and try to validate it. You just need to use Jenkins CLI and then create simple post request to the Jenkins server. and put the Jenkins file here. And as you see, that Jenkins successfully validated, so you can be sure that syntax of your Jenkins file is correct, and you can apply these changes to your Jenkins server. So the next is Jenkins replay function. This function actually allows you to uh, 
rerun your build if some of the uh, steps were failed. For example, I can open my job. I need to open some build. Let's assume that this build was not successfully, or but this build were failed, and now you can click replay, change something in the pipeline script, and just check before committing the changes to Git that your pipeline file will work with the new new changes. So let's change some test duration file and you can click run and you will see that this task will uh, start running on the your Jenkins master. So let's continue. So sometimes you need to work with the different branches in your single repository. Uh, for sure you can just use the different, you can configure two jobs, point this to the single repo and like select the different branches. But uh, in the recent versions, Jenkins already offered the solution called the multi-branch workflow. It will automatically take the pipeline files from the uh, all branches which are available in the repo and create the separate task for the, each of the branches. So you don't need to configure each of the branches separately in the your Jenkins environment. Also, if we can like use the different branches, when, why we can't use the Wawa whole, uh, for example, GitHub account or GitHub organization, if we are all working on the same Jenkins server and we are included in the same GitHub organization. So for this purpose, Jenkins include the feature called organization folder. You can, uh, with the help of this feature, you can just scan all the uh, repositories available under your organization in the GitHub, and if pipeline file is available in your repo, it will be automatically added to the your Jenkins server, and all tasks were created in the Jenkins server. Uh, another problem which we are faced when we was creating like our Jenkins tile for Pivotal Cloud Foundry was the ability to provision uh, Jenkins slaves which run in the builds with uh, some dependencies which will be maybe required during the build process. And since we are trying to build like unified solution, we can just create the new tile file for each of our customers with the different set of tools. We're trying to use the single tile which everyone can download from the Pivotal Network. So most obvious solution for this will be to use the containers which will run our builds inside. So uh, most popular solution to uh, use containers with the Jenkins is now the following. So most obvious is the Docker which we are currently using. Uh, we also consider to use the Kubernetes and Apache Mises, but uh, these two solutions are really complicated. And um, our task from maintaining the Jenkins server will become the to another and more complex task like complicated, uh, like maintaining the Kubernetes server or Apache Mises cluster. So, but i really excited about the uh, announcement of the uh, PKS for the Pivotal Cloud Foundry. So in the near future, we are, we'll to, we're planning to delete our Docker cluster, which we're currently installing with the Jenkins PCF tile, and we'll try to use the shared solution, which comes with the uh, Pivotal Cloud Foundry itself. Uh, so what the problem our mm, containers help to solve us? As I said before, if you need to uh, have some tool to be available during the build process. You just need to modify your Docker file, add the couple of lines which will install your favorite Ruby version, Python version, Go version, and that's it. So I think most of you already know how Docker files works, and this is not a complex task for you. And another benefit, and actually this is the mm, most important point that each build will create his own uh, container for build and each time you will have like fresh builds. So you maybe 
almost 100% sure that all of your builds will be reproducible in any environment. Containers also provide to us the isolation of resources. You can specify in Jenkins configuration that uh, you want to allocate like a specific amount of memory or a specific amount of the CPU to our container and configure in this way our Docker Cloud. So here an example how a basic Docker slave, Docker file, uh, this is slide shows how the basic Docker file to use as a Jenkins Docker slave we can use. You, as you see, it's neat just to install the OpenSSH server, configure the uh, Jenkins user authorization using the SSH, and that's all. Uh, all other steps is depends on you. You can add additional steps to install some stuff which you will require during the build process and so on. This is current architecture of our Jenkins for PCF solution. Basically, we install the one Jenkins master and the uh, Docker host, single host or Docker swarms cluster if you need to, uh, like many hosts which can run the Docker builds. And currently, the problem which we are trying to solve is the high availability of the Jenkins master. This feature already included in the Jenkins enterprise solution, but uh, there is no typical solution from, for the open source version. And for example, we can use the shared file system, but this is configuration a bit tricky and we are trying to solve it somehow. So this is like a short summary for my talk. Finally, Jenkins include pipeline, so you can build like complex logic for, I, for your CI CD process. I also want to mention that not all the configuration is available currently in the Blue Ocean UI. So if you planning to use, be aware of it. And I again want to say that you should always start with a project by implementing the CI CD process. It will be much easier to maintain your pipeline code uh, when you starting in and not when you have like a thousand of code lines in your repository. So this is it. Thank you.